Hey all you cool cats and kittens. Today we're gonna to be playing some poker. The game is No Limit Texas Hold'em. That's right. It's a sit and go tournament. Buy-in is $50,000. Blinds will increase every 45 minutes. No, it's not. Um, not sure where you're getting your information from, but it's completely inaccurate. It's a 5-5 cash game and the max buy-in is $600, but I get into a ton of all-in situations, a lot of big pots. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Uh, this session was shot a month ago. Obviously, a ton of stuff has gone down since then. Pretty much all casinos across the U.S. have shut down, including the Las Vegas Strip. Can't even say at the hotels here. But I've been staying busy. I've been playing a lot of online poker. So mostly on WSOP. I'm on there as Mr. Monkey Bear. I'm playing between three and six tables at a time. Usually 25 cent, 50 cent. I'm trying to do everything the right way. Trying to not tilt too much. And uh, I've probably played... 50 to 60 hours, and I've won about $600. So I'm using this pre-flop guide from Upswing. It's really helpful. As long as I stick with that, then usually I don't get out of line too much, and I'm having a ton of fun. It's keeping my mind busy, and it's helped me uh, stay sharp as a poker player, which is cool. But uh, the problem is, is that the player pool is not that big. Um, it's only legal in Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware. So if you're outside of those areas, unfortunately, I can't play with you. Uh, recently I downloaded this Poker Bros app and I'm in this club. I'll have more information in the description box below for how you can join. But the app is great. The software works really well. Um, I can play with anybody. I can play with you guys anywhere if you're in any state in the US or any other country, which is awesome. So Andrew and I are going to do some virtual meetup games on there. Uh, if you follow us on Instagram, then we'll, we'll tell you when we're on. And the problem is, is that you have to play on your phone unless you get an emulator for your computer. Playing on a phone is just a lot more tilting to me than uh, playing on a computer. So I'm actually down about $650 over like eight hours of play, but I played a little bit bigger and it's a very small sample size. I'm gonna put in some more volume. Hopefully I can build the bankroll back up. But if you do join, then uh, just make sure that you don't deposit more money on there than you're comfortable losing. It's very easy to tilt when, whether you're playing on a phone or on your computer, and it's just easy to go through cash. It just happens so quickly. So uh, it's just something that you have to be mindful of. But as I mentioned before, there's a link down below in the description box for how you can join the specific club that Andrew and I are in. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. It's March 6th in Los Angeles. Before playing poker, I spent some time at the beach, which I rented out, so I could relax just by myself. Now it's time for the third meetup game, the Gardens Casino. We've got 15 tables of 5-5 going. I buy in for 600, which is the max here. Then we get started. Early on, I'm dealt king-queen offsuit on the button. I raised to 15. Small blind calls for 10 more. The big blind also calls. We go three ways to the flop. It's queen 8-5 with two spades. We have top pair and a good kicker. The opponents check. I bet 20 for value. The small blind calls. Big blind calls as well. I imagine I'm up against a worse queen or draws of some sort. The turn is another five. The small blind checks. The big blind decides he's gonna rep trips and leads for 50. I suppose he could have something like six five or ace five of spades. I'm not giving up yet. I call. The small blind goes into the tank then calls two. I'm not sure if I'm ahead anymore. The river is a king giving me top two pair. The small blind checks. The big blind continues with the story that he was trying to tell on the turn that he has trips or better. He fires for 180, leaving himself with 20 behind. I'm on the fence with this decision. I have a strong hand, but my opponent is betting big into two other players. Would he do this as a bluff? Because as good as my hand is, it's really only a bluff catcher at this point. Even if I have the big blind beat, what does a small blind have? I'm taking a long time to think this through. You can see across the table, one of the other players gets out his phone to help capture some footage. This is his angle here. I'm perplexed and not loving the spot that I found myself in. Person filming decides maybe the shot would be better if it looked like he's going over some waves in a boat. His finger then makes a cameo as I'm staring down the opponent to see if I can spot something on him that'll push me one way or another. Ultimately, I come to the conclusion that this is not a kid who looks like he has it. I make the call. I figure there's a good chance a small blind will act quickly since he's had plenty of time to figure out what he wants to do while waiting for me. He tanks though. It's possible he has a five. Eventually, he announces a call. My attention immediately goes to the big blind to see if he's bluffing or not. This is not the face of someone who's happy to get called. Small blind turns over ace-king offsuit with the king of spades. He made an ambitious call on the turn, but he drilled top-top on the river. The big blind doesn't want to show what he attempted to bluff with, and he mucks. I turn over top two pair to win it. 
I thought there was some chance that I was behind both players, so happy to take this one down. It's a large pot for a $600 buy-in game. I've got over 1,000 in front of me. Here I've got Jack-10 of spades in middle position, under the gun straddles. Under the gun plus one limps in for 10. I call, the cutoff calls, the button who's a younger vlog watcher raises to 55. That gets no one out. Everyone calls for 45 more. We go five ways to the flop. It's queen jack nine with two hearts and one spade. I've got middle pair with an open-ended straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. We all check to the pre-flop raiser. He bets 200 and has 305 behind. Folds to me. There's a lot of money in the middle that's worth fighting for. I don't want to fold. I could possibly be ahead if he has something like ace-king. I saw this kid bluff a few hands earlier, so I know he's capable. Against ace-queen, I'm pretty much flipping. It doesn't make much sense to call and leave 305 behind in a massive pot. I rip it for 505 effective. The cutoff folds. The button doesn't snap call, which I'm glad to see. I can't think of a hand that he'd bet 200 with on the flop. Then tank with for 305 more that has me crushed. He says that he knew he should have checked. Looks like he's got a difficult decision. I'd love to see a fold. Nope. He calls, I'm not sure what he has, but I imagine I've got some outs. The turn is another queen, that's not great, could be drawing dead or near dead. The river is the six of diamonds, we brick everything, the opponent turns over ace queen of spades, it was a fair fight when we got it in, but I did not come out on top. I'd soon find out that this particular opponent is a big fan, so even though I don't like losing, I'm glad I went to him, and he's got a cool memory of beating me in an all-in situation. I gotta say, he hasn't said much, but this guy idolizes you, so this is a big deal right now. Nice win for the kid. Meanwhile, I'm stuck, and not too thrilled about that, especially after being up several hundred in the beginning. Add on for 400 more, I'm in for a thousand total. A few hands later, I've got King-8 suited on the button, and it's never looked so good. The kid who just beat me limps in from under the gun for five. He has too many Bradley dollars in front of him. I'm happy he has a memory of beating me, but he'll still have that memory if I beat him here and get some of those Bradley dollars back. Under the gun plus one raises to 15. Player in middle position calls. I call. The big blind calls. The under the gun limper puts in another raise to 60. This is a very small three bet considering the action so far. Under the gun plus one calls. The middle position player calls. I call getting almost five to one. The big blind somehow finds a fold. We go four ways to the flop and it's a dream. It's queen 10 six all spades. We flop the second nut flush. It was already a big pot. Under the gun checks. Under the gun plus one bets 100. The middle position player folds. I don't want to raise too much and scare people off. I make it 250. I've only got 300 behind. It'll be easy to get the rest of that in if anyone wants to stick around. Under the gun folds. Under the gun plus one just flats at 250. Part of me is wondering if maybe he has the ace high flush and is trying to trap me. The turn is the three of diamonds. It's a complete blank. Under the gun plus one checks. The pot is enormous compared to what I have left in my stack. There's only one move that makes sense. Wow. I've never been called faster in my life. Probably am up against the ace high flush. The river is the seven of spades. It's a terrible card. I'm the one who went all in, so I have to show my hand first. The opponent apparently isn't holding the ace of spades in his hand. He mucks. I get the full double up in a massive pot. It's been a roller coaster session so far. I was up 400 to start, then I got stuck 400. Now, just like that, I'm up 350 and I have 1350 in front of me, but the excitement isn't even close to being over. In this one, I've got king queen suited in the hijack. The under the gun player is straddled. Under the gun plus one opens to 40. I call. Big blind calls, we go three ways to the flop. The dealer puts out 10, 9, 4, rainbow. We have a gutter with two overs. Checks to me, I bet 65, hoping to take it down, but if I get called, I have a good plan B. The big blind folds, under the gun plus one calls, we're heads up. The turn is a jack, we smash it and currently have the nuts. As things are getting interesting, Edgar, who is a legend in the Los Angeles area, interrupts to start a conversation with me. What's the difference between your wife and your girlfriend? While we're waiting for the punchline, the opponent leads for 200. What's the difference? 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> we're all having a good time, but there's a lot going on at once here. I've got the best possible hand, and I've announced a raise to 550. We've got 45 behind, and the opponent is not letting his cards go. Uh, okay, the coolers, the Yeah. Wow. Once he says that, I imagine that he's in trouble with a smaller straight. The river is the king of clubs, it's a terrible card. Flush draws get there, and any queen at least chops with me. I turn over my hand, the player mucks, and ask how much I have. We get a count, it's 1,035 total. The pot is well over 2,300. It's by far the biggest hand that I've won in a Gardens Casino meetup game. It's difficult for a pot to be bigger than that when it's 5'5 five five and it's a $600 max buy-in. I've got a huge pile of chips in front of me. The dealer is my favorite, so I give him a $15 tip. Next we have queen jack offsuit on the button. I open to 15. 
small blind calls. That's him right here. His name's Tim. I just invited him over to this table because I didn't get a chance to play with him in the previous Gardens meetup game. I told him that if he came to the next one, I'd make sure to play with him no matter what. The big blind also calls. We go three ways to the flop. It's Jack nine four rainbow. We've got top pair. Checks to me. I bet 20. I'm looking to get at least one call. I get it out of Tim. The big blind folds. We're heads up. The turn is the five of hearts. Small blind checks. A lot of times I check back for pot control. Here I go for it, betting 35, thinking I'm probably still ahead. Small blind calls. The river is the seven of spades. 10-8 gets there. That's about it. Small blind checks. I get the sense this player's one to call me down light, so I go for a third street, betting 70. We hear something that sounds pretty good to me. I have no idea what you're asking. I call The queen jack. The player shows his cards, and it turns out we did get called light. Four or five? What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that he called light pre-flop and on the flop, then Tim smashed the turn to take the lead and win. I invite you over. My bad. <laughs> you beat me in it, you suck out. Nice hand, man. I appreciate it, Brad. Thank you. Nice hand. The last hand we'll go over, I've got Queen 10 suited in the small blind. The hijack raises to 20. The cutoff calls. I call for 15 more. The big blind calls. We go four ways to the flop. It's Jack 9 8 with two spades. We've got the nuts again. I check. The big blind checks. The hijack puts out a small bet at 25. The cutoff calls. Can't slow play this. There are too many cards that I won't want to see on the turn in the river. Plus, we have multiple opponents. I raised to 125. Big blind folds. The hijack calls. We've got at least one customer. The cutoff then unexpectedly jams for 330 total. This is escalated quickly. The hijack has another 755 behind. I don't want to get cute. Flat the 330. Then have the hijack coming after me and somehow suck out. I rejam for 880 effective. The hijack tanks. Then he folds. The cutoff made it sound like he was in a lot of trouble. I turn over my hand first to save him any embarrassment. If I get a clean run out, that'd be terrific. One time. The turn is a six. I like that one. The river is a 10. That's not what I wanted to see, especially because the cutoff starts cheering. Oh, yeah. 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 Player has queen jack offsuit. You got it in with top hair and a gutter. You definitely want people doing that kind of stuff, but it hurts when they hit the three outer to chop. <laughs> this is the worst player in LA. <laughs> Overall, it's been a great night. I've been playing for a while, so I'm gonna book a win and rack up. Awesome nights. I won 11.65 over eight hours, played some big hands. Didn't play actually that many interesting hands, but the ones I did play, I thought were uh, were uh, pretty awesome. So they were big, I won most of them. Um, I doubled up somebody, I doubled up myself a couple times and uh, chopped that big one at the end. So uh, fun night, it's going to make for a fun vlog, I hope. And uh, now we're headed to the bar. There's nothing quite like winning a good chunk of money and being surrounded by your friends while having some beers. Another successful meetup game is in the books. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and uh, make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you're notified anytime that I put out a new video. And I do have some new videos that are gonna be coming out over the next several weeks. So I have some other live poker videos and then some other ideas for content that I'm gonna create. Um, big thanks to Gardens Casino for allowing us to host out there. That's basically our home away from home. We're doing more meetup games there than anywhere else this year. And as soon as this all gets back to normal, we'll be back in the Los Angeles area and uh, we'll be hosting some more events. I'm really looking forward to that. In the meantime, if you're looking for more poker content, then uh, check out some podcasts that I've done recently that, that have just come out. So there's one with 88 Poker's Kara Scott. She's amazing. Uh, not only is she an accomplished poker player, but she asks interview questions that are a lot more personal. So they're much different than pretty much any other podcast interview that I've done. And then also check out uh, DGAF. He is one of the coolest guys in poker. And, uh, you know, he's becoming a friend of mine. I, I know him through Check Race Charles. He puts out a ton of good content. If you guys like this vlog, then uh, I guarantee you that you'll, you'll enjoy listening to him. So I did an interview with him, and I'll have links to both those podcasts um, in the description box down below, as well as information on how to join the Poker Bros Club that Andrew and I are in. So uh, hope to see you guys around. We'll be doing some virtual meetup games. I'll be on the Poker Bros app a lot this week. Follow me on Instagram, and, and I'll post every time that I'm on there. 
Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you're staying safe and uh, I'll see you next time.